today's lesson is all about the Earth's energy balance. So all of the energy that the sun gives off, that electromagnetic spectrum, really high energy waves to really low energy waves, and all of that gets sent straight towards the Earth. What happens when that energy gets to the Earth? And how does the Earth balance out that energy to keep itself pretty stable? Our seasons are pretty stable. Our weather is pretty stable for the most part. So how does that all work? Okay, first thing that I want you to do is I want you to brainstorm a list of ideas. When the, earth, or when the sun's energy hits our atmosphere and enters our atmosphere, what happens to it? What are some things that happen to that energy? The picture here is showing you one of those things that can happen with that energy. If you get a very big pulse of energy from the, uh, the sun, it can cause northern lights, also known as aurora borealis which you can see sometimes if you go way up north, um, the closer you are to the north or south pole, the more likely you are to see this event happening. So take a minute, pause the video, and in your notes, list as many Id other ideas besides um, the northern lights that would happen to the sun's energy as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. All right, some of that heat that comes in is going to help regulate the temperature on Earth. What would you guess is the average temperature on Earth? <coughs> and this is taking into account all the really cold places like Minnesota and all the really warm places like, I don't know, the Bahamas. And where, what's kind of the average temperature that exists? If you're looking Celsius, it's about 15 degrees Celsius. Fahrenheit is 59 degrees Fahrenheit is the average temperature. Pretty moderate temperature. Pretty well in that middle zone for things to survive and live. This average temperature happens because we have a balance of energy coming in. So the energy that comes from the sun comes in through our atmosphere to the earth. And we also let some of that energy back out to space. And this process has to be balanced very carefully in order to get this nice average temperature. If our temperatures warmed up too much or cooled down too much, it could throw the entire balance of the earth off. So, of that 100% of energy that the sun sends our way, only about 70% of it actually makes it through our atmosphere and stays in our atmosphere. 30% of it gets reflected back out to space, either by clouds or different particles in our atmosphere, dust particles, um, CO2 particles, sand or snow. Sometimes it will make it through the atmosphere, hit something really bright like snow, and bounce right back out. Um, and that's included in that 30% that we don't get to ever use. So 70% of it, though, does come all the way through and stays within our atmosphere. So we break that down a little further. Okay, of that 70% that stays, a third of that energy the Earth is going to use to power the hydrologic cycle, or also known as the water cycle. So the raining and then the evaporating and then the condensing into clouds and raining again. A third of the energy that gets into our atmosphere is used for that. The other two-thirds of the energy that gets in is used to warm our atmosphere and to warm up our oceans and our, the land, the continents. Um, and if we didn't have that energy warming us up, there would be no life here on Earth either. So, again, we said 70%, um, which is this half over here, of the sun's energy will make it into our atmosphere. Of that 70%, 51% of it is absorbed at the surface, so it heats up oceans and land. And 19% of that 70 is actually absorbed and used to heat up the atmosphere. The 30% that is reflected back out that we never get to use is represented over here on this side. So 20% of that is just bounced right back up off the clouds and back into outer space. 6% of it comes off of the atmosphere and 4% will make it all the way to the surface and hit some sand or salt or uh, snow and bounce right back out. So one of the types of radiation that the sun gives off is UV radiation. And if you remember, UV radiation is a little bit higher energy than the visible light, um, which is why UV radiation can damage our skin. It can um, 
uh, interact with different materials differently and it can be used to create energy so because it's a little higher energy it has more purposes now when that UV energy comes through our atmosphere and hits the surface of the earth it gets converted because remember energy can be converted to infrared so it's a much lower energy wave once it hits the earth now infrared is a type of energy that heats things up so if you go to McDonald's they put infrared lamps above the french fries to keep them warm so the infrared heat that's hanging out in our atmosphere is the energy that's keeping us warm it's very important so here's a picture and this picture is demonstrating what we call the greenhouse effect so the sun gives off energy okay heads towards earth makes it through all the way to the surface two things can happen either it's gonna hit the surface of the earth and then bounce right back out to space that would be in that 30 percent that gets reflected back out to space or it could come in hit the surface of the earth um, and then bounce off remember when it hits the surface it turns to infrared heat now it comes back up but you can see it gets trapped here on the very edge of our atmosphere is a thin layer of CO2 and some other gases, but mostly CO2, um, that is gathering here. And what that CO2 particles do is they kind of create a blanket. And so when that ray of infrared heat goes to leave to go back out to space, it hits that blanket and it gets trapped and it gets bounced back down to Earth and it just continues to bounce between that layer of CO2 and the earth now having infrared heat trapped in our atmosphere is going to warm up our atmosphere now most of the time you hear the word greenhouse effect and you probably associate that with being a bad thing they say you know you don't want to have the greenhouse effect on earth but the truth about that is that um, that greenhouse effect is really what keeps the earth warm if we didn't have the greenhouse effect happening on Earth, our average temperature would be negative 18 degrees Celsius or zero degrees Fahrenheit. If that were true, we would have no life on Earth because we would have no liquid water. So the greenhouse effect truly is important to our existence and the existence of all living things on Earth. It's not a bad thing. <coughs> and it happens naturally. The problem becomes when we sort of mess with our atmosphere and, and that affects the greenhouse effect um, or amplifies the greenhouse effect and then we throw off the Earth's energy balance. So the gases that create that blanket, carbon dioxide is the biggest one. And that's the one that you hear most of the time when associated with the idea of global warming or um, the greenhouse effect so um, governments are trying to monitor the amount of carbon dioxide that's released into our atmosphere so that we're not amplifying the greenhouse effect on our planet but carbon dioxide is not the only gas up there that's doing that blanketing water vapor does it uh, methane nitrous oxide and chlorofluorocarbons big word okay we try to limit the amount of all of these things that we're releasing into our atmosphere um, just because it's just going to make that blanket thicker and thicker. So as we release more and more CO2 into the atmosphere, what can happen? Okay, obviously if you're releasing more CO2 or any of those other gases, that blanket that's on the very edge of our atmosphere is going to get thicker and thicker. Well, if we're putting a warmer blanket on the Earth, okay, more CO2, that means that more of that infrared heat is going to get trapped. Less will escape back out into the space. And so we're really going to throw off that balance of incoming energy and outgoing energy. If we trap more heat in our atmosphere, that means we're going to have higher temperatures on Earth. And when we get that out of whack too much, we end up melting glaciers and... Um, causing deserts and droughts and rainy seasons where they're not supposed to be. It throws off the temperatures and, and um, weather of all the areas on Earth. And eventually you get too high of temperatures and we're going to throw the energy off too much and our whole Earth is going to, it's not going to burn up, but this would be global warming. And when you have global warming, it is a very serious problem. 
So a normal amount of greenhouse effect on Earth is a really good thing. Okay, if you are adding to those gases that create the greenhouse effect, then that's when you're creating problems. Um, when you're done with these notes, I want you to click on another video. It's called, it's listed here for you, and it's also on our class website just below these notes. It's called the National Geographic Catastrophic Climate Change. That's going to walk you through what would happen as our climate changes. And this video will be very helpful in you filling in your um, global warming cause and effect. If you guys have any questions, let me know.